Hello, my name's Scott Davis. Welcome to New World Birth. This is the weekly neutrino forecast for June 21st to June 27th of 2015. And on June 21st, uh, we have the sun. You can see it denoted here by this black circle with a dot in it. It's at the end of uh, Gemini and moves into uh, Cancer later in the day. It's also in the 15th hexagram. And on the outside of the wheel, we see the chop mark from the 15th hexagram, numbered from bottom to top. The 15 goes yin, yin, yang, yin, yin, yin. And then the 15th hexagram is mapped to an opening in an energy channel called the gate. And right here, this is the 15th gate of uh, mod extremes, modesty, the quality of behavior, which expresses the proper balance located in the G center in a, a collective logic energy path in the understanding circuit called the channel of rhythm, a design of being in the flow that connects to its harmonic, the fifth gate of fixed rhythms waiting, uh, the fundamental attunement to natural rhythms waiting as an active state of awareness. And I found human design to be amazingly accurate in describing the person that I use it as my primary tool when I provide readings. And we have the following activated gates on June 21st. We've got the sun in the 15th gate with the earth in the 10th gate. The north node is in the 18th gate with the south node in the 17th gate. Mercury is in the 16th gate. Uh, Venus is in the 7th gate. Mars is in the 12th gate. Uh, we've got Jupiter in the 4th gate. Saturn is retrograde in the 14th gate. Neptune is retrograde in the 37th gate, oh, and we've got Uranus in the 51st gate. Neptune retrograde in the 37th gate, Pluto retrograde in the 38th gate. So obviously not every gate activation forms a channel, but this information can be very helpful if you know your human design chart, because some of these transits will form channels with potentials in your personal body graph. And the neutrino forecast is basically just a weather report, and whatever the weather note, uh, your individual strategy and authority is the correct choice to have an authentic experience regardless of the program. As Ra Uruhu said, whatever the weather is going to be, you have your neutrino umbrella. As long as you're experimenting with your strategy and authority, the weather's for your pleasure. And as we begin the week, there's no channel definitions due to the transit field. We're going to be looking at the sun's Ray Ching line values daily because 70% of the neutrinos we receive come from the sun. And as Ra said, in living with the program, the lines of the day and talking about these daily shifts of line values, he said we can always take advantage of the themes of the day. If your strategy and authority doesn't lead you in that direction, you can always notice how the program's affecting others in your environment. So let's get started. Uh, on June 21st, the day begins with the sun in the second line, the hermit line of the 15th uh, hexagram and gate. Uh, the sun's exalted in the 15-2 and described as influence. Exalted modesty and right action result in enduring standards, the capacity of the self to accept its extreme nature as correct. Second line days, uh, uh, people are waiting for things, are waiting to be called, particularly called for natural talents. Uh, they can be stuck in their own trip. Uh, might not be a great day to have a party because uh, it's a hermit energy. Uh, people would rather uh, stay home. But then later on the 21st, the sun then moves into the third line of the 15th hexagram. Uh, this shift happens at 3.46 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So you might want to convert that to your local time zone. Uh, the sun in the 15.3 is ego inflation, the risk that modesty once recognized will self-destruct, uh, exalted where the otherwise negative contrived modesty is here reinforced by recognition and maintained as an effective strategy. The extremism of the self as a strategy to, to control the flow. Detrimented, the I told you uh, mentality, the capacity of the self to point out extremes of others. In third line days, uh, in the line of the martyr, we're talking about bonds made and broken. 
a trial and error process, a system of discovery by figuring out what doesn't work. Um, things bump into us under that third line energy. So, you know, you want to be careful of swinging doors, swinging elbows, careful of other uh, on, on roads and things like that. Um, it, it might be a day when we have bonds made and broken. Uh, you know, like I said, trial and error process. Uh, so uh, it's uh, a good material day, a good day to work on the material plane. But you have to be careful because things can go wrong. But ultimately, uh, they may lead to discovery. Also on the 21st. Uh, we've got Mercury, uh, sorry, we've got Mars moving out of the 12 and joining the Sun in the 15. Uh, so uh, Mars is in the gate of extremes, modesty, the quality of behavior, which expresses the proper balance between extremes. Mars is detrimented in the first line of the 15 as duty, the ability to confront any challenge without expectations. Detrimented alienation engendered through exaggerated claims. The capacity of the self to alienate others uh, through extremes. When Ross spoke about Mars being an extraordinary and immature energy resource that lacks refinement and is subject to outbursts. Uh, Mars represents the warrior archetype in mythology. Uh, and by following our strategy and authority, we slowly refine the energy of our design and personality Mars from immaturity to wisdom. And then on the 22nd, uh, the sun then moves up into the fourth line. So it leaves the Marta line, moves into the opportunist line of the 15th uh, hexagram at 321 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The sun in the 15-4 is the wallflower, modesty as a shield against exposure of inadequacy, exalted a genuine uh, form that may or may not mask inadequacies, the uncomfortableness of the self when it is out of the flow, detrimented a, and, you, uh, uh, and ultimately a weak defense uh, leading to, uh, to exposure and humiliation. Uh, extremism that keeps the self out of the flow. And once we get to the fourth line, we're moving into the upper trigram, which is transpersonal. Uh, so uh, the fourth line, moving into the fourth line, the, uh, the, the perspective shifts from being more inward to looking outward uh, with the fourth line themes of friendship, companionship, networking. Fourth line days are great for social interactions as people are more open to networking uh, and being friendly and social. On the 23rd, uh, the sun then moves uh, into the fifth line. So into the, the uh, line of the heretic of uh, the 15th uh, hexagram at uh, 2.55 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The sun in the 15.5 is described as sensitivity. The ability to sense when otherwise balanced behavior must be adjusted to meet the requirements of changing in uh, of changing environment. Uh, exalted the power to grow, the capacity of the cell to grow through experiencing extremes. Detrimented uh, tendency, the tendency to overcompensate, the drive of the self to overcompensate and disturb the flow. And the fifth line energy is really, you know, to me, the important thing to recognize is about projection. And the projection goes positive to negative. Positive, they could do it. They'd be great at it. That's the perfect person for whatever it is. And then if the person doesn't do it, can't do it, doesn't want to do it, for whatever reason, they don't meet that expectation. That's when the, the negative projection comes and, and the punishment, uh, you know, the heretic is tied to the stake type of thing. Um, so fifth line days uh, are, are there's suspicion, but also universalization where something can leak out and spread like a virus, uh, you know, like a YouTube video or a Facebook post that goes viral. Uh, there's a great deal of suspicion and, and they talk about paranoia on a fifth line day. Uh, which impacts the nature of relationships. As I've said before, uh, if they're out to get you, then it really isn't paranoia, is it? And often with projection, uh, they, if they're unhappy with what, uh, that then you're not meeting their expectation, then they certainly could be out to get you. Um, seduction also being a theme of a fifth line day. Um, 
And then on the 24th, the sun then moves up into the sixth line, the roof of the hexagram, uh, 15th hexagram, role model line, uh, at 2.31 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, the sun in the 12.6 is self-defense, modesty that's never confused with weakness, exalted, uh, consistent re-examination to weed out the weakest aspect, the power of the self in exploring extremes to find the weakest point, detriment a tendency to use harmony as a weapon in prob problem situations rather than focusing on the root cause, um, the uh, power of the self to ignore the highest point uh, in favor of uh, harmony. And six line days uh, are on the roof of the hexagram. If you think about being on the roof of a building, we don't tend to look at the building so much as what else is going on around the building, what's in the neighborhood, things like that. Um, Ra talked about what, on six line energy not to get stuck with your head in the clouds because you'll end up with something uh, banging into your shins or your kneecaps. It's a day where there's a lack of focus on what's going on around you uh, because folks are looking beyond their immediate environment. They're looking down the road, what's coming next. And because of that, like third line days, there's certain dangers of perhaps not seeing a car coming, not seeing a bill coming, uh, you know, something that's in the immediate environment when we're looking uh, beyond. And then on the 25th, the sun then moves uh, out of the 15th hexagram where it's leaving uh, uh, Mars behind, and it moves into the 52nd hexagram and gate. Um, and uh, and then we've also got uh, the Earth leaves moves out of the ten, and it moves into the uh, fifty eight. Let's say channel definition here, defining the root center and. and also the splenic center. And uh, so uh, let's let's talk about uh, uh, the earth in the 58. Uh, this is the gate of aliveness, the joyous. Uh, stimulation is the key to joy. Uh, this shift happens at 2.06 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time with the sun in the 52nd gate of inaction, keeping still, mountain, uh, temporary and self-imposed in action for the benefit of assessment. And we've got the sun in the first line of the 52, uh, which is described as think before you speak, exalted, the pause that is so profound that it leads to silence, uh, the pacification of energy that leads to stillness, detrimented, uh, speaking first and living with the consequences afterwards, uh, the energy that cannot be uh, stilled. And uh, when we move into a new hexagram, first, second, third lines, we're in the lower trigram. And uh, <clears throat> the, the lower trigram is, is more about the, uh, the personal process as opposed to the upper trigram of being transpersonal. Um, and so uh, when we are in the uh, uh, first line, there's usually some type of fear or anxiety that needs to be investigated. So it's a day to study, not to act. It's a day to look into things, not to jump. It's a good day to deal with things you don't understand and can't make sense of uh, or, or simply just don't know. Also on uh, the 25th, uh, Mercury moves from the 16th gate uh, to the 35. And uh, so uh, Mercury in mythology was the, is the messenger of the gods. So this is about communication, expansion of human consciousness through communication, not just as words, but also as music. And what do we need to communicate in life? Well, we communicate the message of our design Mercury through the medium of our personality Mercury. So what might be communicated when Mercury is in the 35? 
uh, well, I would expect people to say, I feel, that's the voice of the 35. Uh, and, and usually it's, I feel it's time for a change uh, because this is the gate of change, progress. Uh, by design, progress cannot exist in a vacuum and is dependent on interaction. Uh, <clears throat> Mercury is in the first line of the 35, which is humility. Uh, the ability to accept rejection. It's all through the artist that accepts rejection as part of the process. Acceptance of change and rejection as part of the process. Detrimented, a self-destructive rejection, uh, a self-destructive reaction to rejection. Loss of worth. Change and rejection as humiliation. And with the Earth in the 58 and uh, the North Node in the 18, we've got the channel of judgment. Uh, which is the design of insatiability that will be with us until July 1st, uh, bringing us pressure to offer constructive criticism. Uh, this is a conditioning force that's best if it's invited uh, and its purpose is not personal, but for good for the collective. Uh, this can influence us uh, to become perfectionists with an insatiability to make improvements. Unfortunately, most people will not be aware of this influence on how best to apply it in their lives. So we'll probably see a lot of uh, uh, folks uh, meeting resistance as they try to change their families or their lovers or friends with little success, uh, which then leads to a sense of uh, dissatisfaction. Uh, after all, uh, true perfection does not exist, only ascending levels of mastery. Um, and with the uh, defined splenic center, uh, this brings intuition and well-being. Uh, Ra warned that non-splenic people may let go of something that is good for them uh, during a transit uh, defining the splenic center. And then for folks without a root center, this definition could also bring uh, pressure. <clears throat> Excuse me. And on the 26th, the sun then moves up into the second line, so leaving the investigator line into the hermit line of the 52, uh, which is described as concern, exalted, the pause that initiate the, the pause that is initiated to benefit others, the pressure uh, to restrain energy for the benefit of others, detrimented uh, a selfish and abrupt pause that can engender others, un, uh, endanger others unnecessarily. The, the pre pressure to selflessly restrain energy at the expense of others. And second line days, we talked about this a little earlier, this is the line of the natural, um, the hermit. Uh, you know, so again, it's, it, it's, it's people are more inward in their perspective, um, you know, wanting to remain at home more than uh, be out socializing uh, with that hermit energy. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it also is uh, a line where there is a calling. You know, people get called to do things, uh, particularly the things that they have a natural talent for. Uh, on the 27th, uh, the sun then moves up into the martyr line uh, of the uh, 52. Uh, uh, it's a third line, uh, the shift happening at 1.17 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The sun in the 52.3 is controls, external enforcement of inaction, exalted the ability by its very nature to understand restraint with the potential in acceptance to use the period to redefine strategies. The energy for acceptance in inaction detrimented a deep dissatisfaction Satisfaction with controls that disturbs tranquility uh, leads to emotional withdrawal and affects vision. Uh, the pressure of restraint uh, disturbs tranquility. So third line days, uh, um, again, we're back to the line of the martyr, uh, trial and error process, bonds made and broken, system of discovery by figuring out what doesn't work. Um, so again, uh, we've got, uh, um, you know, being careful of, of things bumping into you with the, uh, the third line energy, uh, being, you know, aware of bonds being made and broken, uh, and that making discoveries by figuring out what doesn't work as being uh, energetics uh, when, when the sun is transiting the third line. Um, also on the 27th, 
Uh, Venus moves uh, from the 7 and up in joining uh, Jupiter in, in uh, the fourth hexagram. <clears throat> in human design, Venus is very powerful and deeply misunderstood. According to Ra, it brings morality, natural law, which we deal with the other and the consequences of the world around us. And what disturbs you on a moral level? Uh, your uh, design and personality, Venus, is... Uh, tell us about the moral dilemma that you're going to work with in your life. And that if you don't act with moral clarity, Venus can be unkind in this retribution. Uh, in, in the fourth hexagram, uh, Venus is in the gate of formalization, youthful folly, uh, the energy to beguile and succeed despite ignorance, uh, freedom from retribution. Uh, Venus is in the first line of the four. Uh, which is pleasure. Ultimate pleasure cannot be achieved without perfect timing. Exalted, the instinct to know the right moment and circumstances where pleasure is rewarded and not punished. Uh, the potential to recognize that there are there is a natural timing to the understanding process. Detrimented timing that is not a product of discipline. Uh, exaggerated self-discipline leads to abuse of pleasure. The potential to recognize, but the urge to force the timing. So no matter what the uh, energies that are conditioning you during the week, just remember uh, that this is a, experience is about being a passenger, riding in a vehicle that's being driven by the magnetic monopole. Enjoy the scenery. Let the vehicle take you where you need to go through using your strategy and authority. Every day is a blessing, no matter what the dramas that beckon to distract us. We're all here giving the performance of a lifetime on this world stage. Just take some time to observe the play, observe your movie, as well as acting your part uh, by remembering you're a spiritual being that's having a human experience. So I want to thank you for checking out New World Birth. The next segment of the weekly neutrino forecast will be on June 28th, 2015, should be available on the 27th, when we'll continue to look at the influence of the heavenly bodies as they transit the sky and the hexagrams of the I Ching. You can check us out on Facebook, Blogger, or YouTube, because there's New World Birth Presences in all those places. And I encourage you to share this information as videos or as text as widely as you choose. And I invite you to contact me at newworldbirth at yahoo.com if you've got any questions or wish to schedule a reading. So if you've been thinking about getting a reading, please contact me. I would love to provide you a reading during these uncertain times. You'll need to be able to either call me in Maine in the USA or we can connect with Skype to receive your reading. Um, we're also accepting donations. Uh, to keep these uh, reports freely available. Um, and I do want to just mention that uh, my dear friend, um, uh, Kevin Bull, uh, passed away uh, on June 3rd, earlier this month. Uh, and uh, if you had uh, ever uh, been part of the Earth Needs Rebels radio show, I used to uh, present a, a, a astrological and human design uh, perspective every uh, at the beginning of every month on on uh, Earth Needs Rebels uh, with with Kevin uh, for almost two years. Um, anyway, uh, I just want to you know express uh, my uh, gratitude towards Kevin and also uh, my deepest sympathies uh, to uh, Katie, his uh, wife and soulmate. Um, and then, so. Thank you very much, both of you, and uh, I, I miss you, Kevin. Um, as always, I'm blessed that you've taken the time to connect with my passion for these ancient mysteries and their application to our journey uh, during this incarnation. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste, in La Cash, and as Ra would say, love yourself. All right, thanks, everybody. Catch you next time.